realized that it's all down to um, getting some soul across and, and saying something meaningful. Matt and I met about 25 years ago, and we've been doing music together ever since. The first band that we um, had where we were really working on our own stuff was uh, Trip Shakespeare, and, and that band started in the, about 1985, which is kind of amazing. I don't know very many other artists who have managed to do that. I failed to hear her speak of many things. We convinced Dan, my brother, to come back from uh, San Francisco. We toured our butts off and played all over the Midwest and the East Coast. We just kind of kept doggedly pursuing our dream of what the music should be. And, and sure enough, these like guys started coming around and going like, we're going to sign you up to a record contract and make you a star. Yeah. And so we made these these five recordings. And Lulu, we put it out, and it was flowery. And um, meanwhile, the whole world was uh, kind of going towards um, Seattle, Kurt Cobain, and this much uh, grungier thing than us. But the record just it kind of died, right? Or did it, mm -hmm. it didn't do a damn thing in terms of. Commercially. They didn't find an audience. And I, and I really thought I was a big boy, and you know, I was like, yeah, you know, it's like you do what you do, and I love the record, but I, I think that there was this big, huge third of me that was just kind of secretly, quietly just crushed. Meanwhile, um, Dan, my brother, and John, and a friend, Jake, were uh, kind of, it was kind of as I was becoming maybe less tolerable and getting, getting uh, a little wiggier. And these guys were working on Dan songs, and Dan was starting to flower, and uh, Trip Shakespeare just kind of stopped, and Temi Sonic just kind of jumped right out of that. When we started playing together most recently, you know, we were just going to be a duo. It's going to be John on upright bass, me on acoustic guitar, and we would just do whatever we could do with that, and we'd, we'd limit ourselves like that. And you know, pretty soon there's drums, and now I'm playing a little electric guitar. John got rid of the upright, and he's playing um, electric bass. And it's right back to just you know the same phantom sound that we've been chasing after for years and years. The record that we made, Stereo Night, when we were making the record, The Twilight Hours didn't exist. It was just kind of what we were working on at the time. But we put together this band, The Twilight Hours, and I think we both kind of have that feeling about this band now, that we've got this special new thing, and it's, it's alive and it's a, a collaboration. The songs are, are taking on a new life. Broken man, I was living with a singer in a local band. Such a sweet situation, I don't understand. I wake up in sorrow. Now the band has kind of evolved a sound. So you bring in this new song, and the band makes it alive, like it very quickly becomes just a living work of art. Yeah, what happens to it is uh, unpredictable and uh, uncontrollable, and really, uh, it's really exciting. I went through a period when uh, John was off and my brother was off doing so well on Semisonic and I was kind of becoming again and trying to figure out what my next path was. And the part about I got a job as a dime store clerk and now her song is on the speaker every day at work, you know, that's kind of like a, <laughs> a little bit of semi, semi, my uh, semi sonic experience. She. Huh. What's that yeah. all about? Yeah. I got that, was that I supposed to not see through that little yeah. device? Take it out. <laughs> Even though our paths have diverged from time to time, you know, we've found compelling things about our partnership 
and reasons to come back and, and do music together. I think the main one being that it, it's pretty fun. <laughs>